all, I just wanted to take some time to thank uh, you know all the subscribers, you know, all the people that have subscribed. Um, I started this channel just to help people out. Um, whenever I was trying to do something on my vehicle, I always looked, uh, you know, mostly on YouTube to look for videos of things that um, you know would help me repair whatever was wrong or maintenance or and so forth. Um, I've always been into cars. To give you a little bit of background, um, I've always been into vehicles. My dad had a a, uh, six, I think it was a 67 Fastback Mustang when I was a kid, you know. So that was my introduction into the world of, of cars. Uh, my first car uh, that I ever purchased was a 95 Mustang GT convertible. And, you know, I love that car. I did everything on that car, you know, suspension, um, air intake. You know, that's where I, um, you know, that's where I got my start uh, really tinkering and playing with cars. Um, you know, and I, and I saw that growing up for my dad. My dad actually is a, actually he had a different car. I think it was actually it was a '67 Mustang where he ended up I think washing the engine and um, obviously didn't cover up the right parts. And he ended up I remember my dad taking apart the entire just everything under the engine to dry it off to try to get it to restart again. And um, so these little memories you know that stick around with you. Um, and you know now I'm kind of uh, you know taking over that that role and, and, and tinkering with the cars. But my first car was a '95 Mustang GT. Um, like I said, I was 18 years old. I worked my butt off uh, to get that. And uh, eventually, um, a little down the road, I, I ended up picking up a Jetta as a, as a beater, and uh, I ended up buying a uh, 2003 Cobra, uh, Mustang Cobra Terminator, and that was probably my most favorite car out of all the cars I've owned honestly to this day just because it's the car that I put more uh, blood sweat and tears into uh, it's a car that I you know did the exhaust I did the cold air intake um, you know I did pulley we did you know I got I got it dyno tuned um, you know so you know and I used to track the car I, you know, I used to go to the, do the quarter mile and I was running 11 second quarter miles in that car uh, so it's something that's very memorable to me uh, and I had that car uh, for about eight years, you know, before I sold it. Uh, after that, I got a uh, 2005 Corvette convertible, black convertible, brown top. Um, and I had that for several years also. I love, I love that car also. Uh, and, and in between, you know, I got that, that an Escalade. I had a Toyota Corolla. That was my get-around car. I had a Volkswagen Touring after I sold uh, the Jetta, the Jetta um, the Wolfsburg Edition. These are all my daily drivers, you know, but my garage cars were, you know, the Cobra, the, uh, the Corvette, and, um, and now actually what I'm driving now, what I'm in now is the, is the uh, 911 Porsche, uh, 997.2, and um, this car I ended up, I ended up, uh, I guess, you know, we ended up trading in, my wife, we, we all drive all the cars depending on who has the kids and so forth, who's working. Um, but I had the Corvette. It was a two-seater. Uh, I have three little girls, and obviously, you can't pick up three girls in a Corvette uh, from school. Um, so, you know, well, and, and on top of that, uh, you know, honestly, a Porsche to me, after having both cars, is, is an upgrade. Uh, so I have four seats now. Only kids really fit back there. You can't, you can't really fit, you know, an adult. I mean, unless a very, very skinny adult, I can't fit back there. Um, but I can pick up my two girls from school now. I have an eight-year-old and a six-year-old. I can go to school and pick them up, and they definitely enjoy that. And I got a car that's an all-wheel drive. Uh, so this Porsche is all-wheel drive, and I honestly, I drive it all year round. You know, I know it's sacrilege for a lot of people, but after owning all these vehicles, and you know not putting miles on them like my, my, my Cobra was uh, eight years old I think when I sold it and I had like 20,000 miles on it I believe so I just realized you know what I'm gonna enjoy my car you know I'm gonna spend I'm, you know I'm spending a good amount of money on this vehicle um, I'm actually gonna drive it I have all season tires on it and I drive it year-round you know I'm here on, in, in the DC in the Washington DC area and um, I enjoy that you know I enjoy driving and we get snow here you know we get ice and I still take it out there. You know, when it gets really bad, you know, we take I take the Escalade out. But um, 
you know, it's something where that, that's our backup, you know, so, but this is something that I drive all year round. My wife drives it, you know, also on a daily basis, depending on, you know, um, depending on who has the kids and who's picking up the kids from school, etc. Um, and it's something that, it can, it can be daily driven. That's something that I definitely enjoy about this vehicle. And that's the first thing I'm going to say is that it's a car that can be driven every day. You know, it's a car that is it's very track worthy. You know, if you get on it, you put it in sport mode, you put it in sport plus mode, it's going to get up and go. I mean, and, and it handles like it's on rails. I mean, honestly, this is the best handling car that I've owned. So it's something that, um, you know, I'm very happy with. So I've, I've had the car for over two years now. So I just want to go into a little details um, regarding the uh, maintenance. I guess cost involved with the vehicle. Um, you know, this is a 2010. Uh, when I purchased it, I had about uh, it had about I think it was around 20. I want to say 22,000 miles on it. Um, and right now, I'm up to about 40,000 miles. Uh, we're not putting you know, that many miles on it, but um, you know, on average per year. But you know, I'm definitely looking into getting a, uh, a second vehicle. That we have something else to to, um, to drive around and also um, you know other than other than the Escalade. Uh, but you know when I bought the vehicle, the vehicle I actually purchased from a Porsche dealership in Wisconsin. Uh, I, it was international Porsche. Uh, I had I, mean, I, I really wanted the four. You know I wanted the all-wheel drive version. Uh, I wanted a convertible. All my, all my cars have been convertibles. You know all my my performance cars. My Cobra was convertible. My Mustang was a convertible. That was convertible, so I wanted to, and I love a convertible, and my wife does too, so uh, I wanted to stick with that. I couldn't find one in my area, uh, so I, and I searched and searched, and I was trying to get a really good deal, uh, and I found this vehicle up in Wisconsin. Somebody traded it in for a newer Porsche, and um, it was in great condition. You know, I got pictures, I had the uh, salesperson send me a video, um, and um, I had it shipped to my house. And everything, you know, everything turned out fine. And the only thing was, and I was told this when I purchased the vehicle, is that the tires were pretty much done. Uh, so, the first thing I did, and also they were summer tires, and I bought this car in uh, November, October, November. So, the first thing I had to do when I purchased the vehicle is tires. Um, you know, these have 295s or 305s, I think it's stock in the rear. Uh, right currently, I have 295s because they're they're all season tires. They're a Continental TWS or something like that. Um, and they've been great. I mean, you know, I've used them in the winter. I've driven in snow. I've driven in ice. And the, the tires are really good. Uh, I'm really happy with them. Now, that being said, I spent close to, uh, I think, $900 to $1,000 on all four tires. Uh, I think it was probably closer to $900. Uh, so, obviously, that was my first... Uh, that was my first expense with the vehicle. Um, you know, the vehicles I've been on, I've, I've had the vehicle, I guess, you know, what, what uh, if I had 22, it's about 18,000 miles, actually a little bit more than that, probably like 20,000 miles on those tires. And uh, right now when I went to have the tires taken off to get the wheels powder coated, um, they noticed, um, you know, the, the, the rears were a little low, so, you know, another five, 10,000 miles more out of those, and I'll, I'm gonna need another set. Uh, the fronts are great, so I'll only have to spend probably about 500 on the rears. Um, so I guess every, you know, two to three years, you know, depending on how much you drive, you know, $500 on tires. Um, and so that was my first expense. Um, and, and then right after that, uh, when I got the vehicle, the, one of the keys was not was broken or you know it wasn't working you know it was cut and everything um, so you know it fit and i could use it to open the trunk and the door but the actual transmitter wasn't working the key fobs on these things are kind of expensive um i don't know what the dealer charges you i think it's like a hundred dollars or something you can buy them used i think for like 60 80 bucks but the dealership actually sent me a new key fob um so you're actually able to replace the actual metal part of the key, which is the key that's cut, 
so you don't have to take it anywhere to get it you know done uh, the only thing with the key fobs which i found out right in the beginning is that only a porsche dealership can reprogram those keys and they charge you about 180 dollars to reprogram that key um, so i shopped around a bunch of different places i went to a bunch of key shops and all of them told me the same thing, $180. Um, I ended up going to a local Porsche dealership and uh, I think they cut me a break at $150. Um, I mean, I didn't, I didn't ask for it, but I guess I was a new customer. They were trying to treat me right and, you know, but they did keep the vehicle for about an hour uh, in order to do the reprogram. I don't know, you know, what, and I, I seriously doubt it takes an hour to reprogram a key, but that's what they, um, that's what they charge to do. So, long story short, I took the key in, they reprogrammed it, $150, and, you know, and, and with the dealership, obviously, they couldn't do anything, you know, over there. Um, they couldn't reprogram because they need the car, and honestly, with them just throwing in a brand new key, that was enough for me. I mean, obviously, I had to pay $150, bucks, but I got a brand new key. Um, so, and I, and I realized these keys, they're very, you have to figure out where to push them because they have a plastic piece in them that can break if you're pushing it in the wrong spot. So, you know, you can buy the skins for 20 bucks or 30 bucks, but then I quickly realized where I'm supposed to really be pressing that button in order to keep it from cracking, which I think is, you know, it's a flaw in the design of the, of the key. But um, once you know it, you know, I have, you know, I've had it for two years now. I, I replaced it once with a new skin ever since you know the key's been fine uh, so that was you know the second expense that I had um, other than that you know the car was good for a year until I had to change the oil now on, on this car the oil is is direct well it's not recommended the, the car kind of tells you it's been so you know depending on mileage or depending on year you know if, you, if it's been 12 months the car will remind you, you know, you'll get an oil light saying that you have to change the oil. Now this happens, you know, every year. Um, and unless you rack up the miles, you know, it could be sooner. But for me, I'm not driving it enough. Uh, so every year that light comes on. Um, now I know kind of, you know, I know uh, at least 5,000 miles, you know, to, with the synthetic oil, I guess you can probably get up to 10,000 miles. You know, um, so depending on how I've driven it, you know, if it's a year, you know, usually right now I'm changing the oil every year. Uh, so, and I'm, and, and that's second expense. Um, when my oil light came on the first year I had it, I went to the dealership and I said, hey, you know, how much is an oil change? Uh, actually, I called, I called two dealerships and I called another independent shop. And the dealership quoted, both of them quoted me around $360. For, you know, for an oil change. Now, I know the oil is expensive. It, it takes a lot of oil. Um, you know, you have to buy a filter, you have to buy a ring, um, you know, and the oil. But I was like, there's no way you know, that this oil change, I guess they're charging me an hour and a half of labor, you know, at $180 an hour. I think is what Porsche charges you know, at the dealership. Um, so, obviously, I just looked into it. I ended up buying the oil myself, buying a filter from, um, I think it was from Pelican Parts or Suncoast Parts, one of the two. And I bought the filter, I bought the oil, I ended up changing the cabin air filter at that time. Uh, and so in total, I think I spent about $100, uh, including the cabin air filter, you know. And the only thing is that this vehicle with Porsche, they want you to go, they don't want people really tinkering with it, it seems. You know, they want, they don't want people doing the stuff themselves. Um, so, you know, the oil, the only thing with that is the oil light, you can't reset it, you know, which is annoying to me. I mean, on all my cars, you just go in through the settings and you just reset the oil light. And this vehicle, it doesn't let you, you know, and I have an OBD2 scanner, I hooked it up, I try to, you know, see if I can do something through that, it won't, you know, you can't, it has to be specific um, so I ended up getting a scanner and I'll put that in the description you know, later and I'll put it up in the video also uh, I'll take a video of it later 
but I bought like an OBD2, like Porsche specific scanner, with like a Porsche 2 scanner or something. Um, and that actually allowed me to go into the menu, you know, go through the menus in the, in the scanner and reset the oil light. So that scanner, I'll have to look it up. I think it was about $120, somewhere around there. It was 100 and something. Um, but the thing is, I've used that twice now. It's already paid for itself. You know, it paid for itself on the first, you know, the first time I used it. Because I paid $120 for the scanner, and I paid uh, $100, I guess, for the oil and filter, or $80. So I've spent $200 on my first oil change. And um, the oil change, and I'll make a video of that too. I think I have video, I just haven't actually put it together. Uh, the oil change is probably the easiest oil change out of any of my vehicles. It was actually this car. So the oil filter is in the engine bay, in the, you know, up top. So you don't even have to get underneath the car in order to get rid of the, the oil. You know, you just buy a socket. Um, and I'll put that in the description too when I do the oil video. Um, and with that socket, you know, if you don't, if you don't already have, you have to buy one. Um, you just unscrew it, a plastic cap. There's a paper oil filter underneath. You know, you just pop the old one out, pop the new one in. And then the bottom, there's just the drain. Um, you know, you just, you know, you can actually jack up the car a little bit, uh, remove the drain, put the oil, you know, put the pan down and then jack the car down to its level and just leave it there. You know, I ended up doing, uh, I do it at my brother's shop. My brother has a garage at his, at his home that he, um, that he, do, you know, he works out of his garage. He does a lot of air ride systems. And he works with a lot of, uh, you know, Chrysler's, like low car, uh, Challengers, you know, and, that's what he owns. He has a, a 2011 Challenger SR, SRT8, and he works on Chargers and Challengers and sorts. And he works on everything, but that's really his, uh, his niche is the uh, Chrysler, you know, Mopar. Uh, so, you know, I took it to his house. He helped me out with that, just getting it up on the lift, and, um, you know, taking the drain plug out. Now it takes a while, you know, I, I think I let it drain for like an hour. You know, it takes a lot, it just drips for a long time. And then just fill it back up, you know, to fill it back up. It's up top also in the engine bay. And that's pretty much it. I think you, you put a certain amount in, you start it up, and then um, you drive it, I think, and then you top it off. You know, and the oil, there's no oil stick in this vehicle. That's the other thing that I've never had before. So you have to go into the actual menus on, the, uh, on, your, on your display and um, just do an oil reading. Know, and it reads the oils and it will give you a graphic indicator of where the oil level is so that was my that was my first oil change you know so that was for me 200 bucks obviously the next time around i'll only have to spend about 80 bucks you know for the oil and the filter uh so it's not bad you know it's the same amount that i pay to change the oil on my escalade um so you know it's not bad you know so if you're keeping tally you know, I spent five, you know, obviously the, the first expense wasn't a normal expense, you know, you don't have to get tires as soon as you buy the vehicle, uh, but I spent $1,000 on tires, uh, $200 on the oil change, and $150 uh, on the key, you know, key fob. Uh, so what's that, $1,350 is what I've spent in two years. Um, so it's not bad, you know, it's, you know, obviously it'd be $350 if, I didn't have to change the tires, you know, so I think it's pretty reasonable, you know, if you can do things yourself, and that's why I think with YouTube, it's it's great, because, you know, there's a lot of things, I mean, if you can turn a wrench, and you're not scared, then, you know, it's not a big deal, you know, it's something that you, maintenance-wise, it's not a big deal, and these cars are pretty, you know, they're known for being, um, you know, stable, you know, and you know, not breaking down, and not having too many issues, you know, uh, at least the 9, 997.2s, um, you know, so you don't have too many, uh, too many, I guess, big issues. Oh, actually, the other thing that I did have to do was I had to replace a micro switch, um, which was, I actually had to replace the whole door lock mechanism, um, and I believe that was 120 bucks, so I, I lied, there, there was one more expense that I had. Um, I got into an issue where when I opened the door, the window... The window in these cars, it goes down when you open the door, and then it stays down. When you close the door, it just, it's just a quarter of an inch or something like that, so that it doesn't hit the pillar, you know, when it's closing. So the window goes down, um, like a quarter of an inch to half an inch, when you open the door. 
So what happens is when you close a door, it goes back up. What was happening is when I was opening the door, it would go down, but as soon as I released the handle, the latch on the inside, it would go back up. So obviously that caused an issue because when I went to close the door, it would, it would hit you know, the pillar. Uh, so doing research online, uh, on the forums, um, I realized that uh, there was a micro stitch that, that had gone bad, which seemed to be, uh, it seems to be a common issue with this vehicle, um, which actually the actuator on my Escalade is a common issue on my, my, my video. So those are the first real videos that I did. If you look at my channel, uh, those are the first two major uh, videos that I did. And they have probably the most hits because it's just such a common issue. Uh, so, you know, there was no videos online on how to completely take the whole door panel off, including the inner panel. You know, there was videos to take the, 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 the top door panel off, but not the inner panel to get to where the lock is. So I made that video just because, you know, obviously I used the door panel video that I found to help me get to that point, you know, so you kind of pay it forward. Uh, so that was the first video that I, that I made. Um, and that was something that I replaced, you know, and it took me a while just because it was a lot of just trying to figure out how to do things, you know, I didn't have instructions. You know, I was just removing bolts and hoping that, you know, that uh, it, I was doing the right thing, you know. And I'm also playing with stuff that has an airbag. So I'm kind of, you know, I disconnected the battery, obviously, to take precautions. I left it for like an hour or so, uh, so that, you know, there's no charge in it. Uh, so, but it's something that, you know, that was, it's a, to me, it's a minor thing, you know, it wasn't a major expense. Um, other than that, I mean, I've changed the mats. I mean, I won't include that because those aren't things that, you know, it's just personal preference. I put I put black rubber mats in here um, just because we have winters and salt and dirt and all that. Um, and then the biggest expense that I've had, which is it's a non-elective, you know, it's an elective. It's not something that you needed. Is I wrapped the vehicle, and that was uh, that was a three hundred dollar, four hundred dollar expense. Um, Actually, it was probably $400 with all the tools and everything that I purchased. Um, so I wrapped the vehicle in a satin orange, Avery Denison, and I'm, I'm putting up a video of that also. That was a couple week project. You know, I had a, a vehicle that I borrowed from a family member um, that I drove around for two weeks just because I had an hour to work here and two hours to work there on the weekends, maybe a couple hours. So I just did it on my free time, you know. Um, so it took me about two weeks, you know, doing it that way to get it all done. And obviously I was, it was a learning process because I was doing it myself um, in my garage at home without any prior experience with vinyl wrap. So, you know, now, you know, I can take, I can take the bumpers off in 15 minutes now. You know, I've learned, um, you know, from doing it once, I can do it again very easily now. So if I have to rewrap the vehicle later on, I know it, it'll take me probably about an hour per panel fender door and so forth and um, it, it'll take me a lot less time to remove the uh, the bumpers mirrors so forth uh, so that's you know that's been my experience right now you know at two years um, I just recently uh, well recently this is after two years but I recently I just did the plugs the coolant flush brake flush and um, and I think the plugs were about six hundred dollars to get them Actually, no, they were, they were less than that. Uh, I think everything, coolant flush, plugs, alignment, everything was about six, seven hundred dollars um, I had a couple more expenses because I had to, um, I asked, I paid for, for the mechanic to take the calipers off so that I can wrap them off of the car. Um, but, you know, I, I, that I took to uh, Burt Mills Automotive in uh, Silver Spring, uh, or Burt Mills, and, um, you know, I think in the end it was about nine hundred dollars, nine hundred something, for an alignment, uh, coolant flush, brake fluid flush, plugs uh, swap. But it also included the gundo hat, um, so it's probably about two hundred dollars of that was the exhaust mod, uh, which gave the car a much better sound. And so it's not bad, you know. I guess you can add that if you know if you're trying if you're picking up a vehicle that's older. Um, you know, I got to the forty thousand mile maintenance which is probably uh, I think it's the first big uh, maintenance um, there's cabin air filters and stuff like that but I've already done that I have a cold air intake so I didn't have to swap out the filters um, so a lot of the stuff on a 40,000 mile maintenance I already done myself so you know um, it's not you know it's not, it's not to me it's not a huge I mean obviously it's $900 it's honestly 
if I didn't do the exhaust mod, we're probably looking at six, seven hundred dollars. You know, and, and the alignment, I just, you know, since I, I bought the car later, I wanted to have it aligned. Um, but I think the alignment was all right. Um, so, all in all, you know, if you're not counting the tires, you know, maintenance wise, you're probably looking at a thousand dollars in two years, five hundred dollars a year. It's not a, it's not a big deal. You know, um, but the car, I absolutely love the car. I love the fact, the drivability of it. You know, it's something with the PDK transmission. You can sit in traffic. It's not jerky. It's not something where you know. And, and, and the PDK is incredible. PDK. I mean, all my cars have been manual. Absolutely all of them. You know, I used to race. So, you know, I used to have to do the launches, you know, popping, you know, dropping the clutch and, and launching the car at certain RPMs. And this vehicle has a Kona package, which means it also has the launch control. So launch control is the equivalent of that. You know, I can actually, it's, to me, it's even better. You know, you just hope, you know, smash on the brake, you know, rev up the gas, the RPMs go up, you know, launch control appears on your tack, you know, and as soon as you're ready to go, you just let go of the brake and the car just launches. Um, very cool feature, you know. So it's something where, you know, you're not missing that from the manual car. You know, in the manual car, you can do that. And before, you really couldn't do that with an automatic car. But with the PDK, you can do that. And the shifts are ridiculously fast. And, um, and I love the car. I mean, with, you know, you have the different settings. You have the Sport. Like right now, I'll put it in Sport Plus. brake you know you get jolted I mean the Sport Plus it definitely uses the brake I mean uses the uh, motor uh, to help brake you know just like when you're in a uh, manual where you just you know leave the car and drive uh, leave the you know the clutch out in order to help you know the motor help uh, brake with the motor so you know all in all I'm, I'm I'm loving the vehicle I'm enjoying it and you know I just wanted to do a video just to I guess tell you a little bit about myself. I mean, all my videos have been just maintenance and just me tinkering and fixing things and, you know, problem solving in order to help people out there, just like I've been helped uh, with a lot of videos that I've seen out there. But, you know, I just thought I'd shoot a video. I'm on my way uh, to Washington. I'm actually in Washington, D.C. right now. Very good here in the car. <laughs> so I'm in Washington, D.C. right now. And, I thought I'd shoot a uh, uh, video just telling a little bit about myself and um, where I'm coming from and, you know, and just thanking everybody for subscribing and uh, liking my videos.